Today, I'll share a powerful PowerPoint technique that will help you create your PowerPoint presentations faster with fewer revisions and far less frustration. So, do you want to drastically reduce the time it takes for you to create your next PowerPoint presentation? Then keep watching. By the way, I'm Ram Gopal from presentationprocess.com. We help professionals like you create engaging presentations. The secret to creating better PowerPoint presentations faster with less frustration is process mapping. First off, what is process mapping and why is it such a big deal? Let me explain. Let's say you want to improve the performance of a certain task. The first thing you do is to observe how you perform the task right now. You break down the task into the individual steps you follow. This allows you to take a step back and observe the steps closely and see which of the steps help the performance and which ones hinder. Now, once you remove the hindering steps and improve the helping steps, you automatically improve the overall performance. This is the fundamental principle behind process mapping. Now, to showcase the power of such a simple idea and the kind of dramatic difference it can make, I want to take the example of Tirumala Tirupati Devasthanam, which is one of the richest temples in the world. The net worth of this temple is in excess of 31 billion US dollars. The thing is, more than 60,000 people visit the temple every day. I've done just a simple Google image search and you can see the amount of rush that you can see to this temple. Let's click on one of the sites and see what it has to say. See, this is the picture of the temple and the kind of crowd that you can expect there. And these devotees wait for close to 30 hours before they can get a few seconds to be in front of their favorite deity, an act called as Darshan. Now, imagine the kind of frustration that can build up in the 30 hours. Naturally, sometimes it can lead to stampede and some unfortunate instances. So, the management had to step in and improve the situation. So, they decided to apply the concept of process mapping to improve the queue management system. So, they decided to follow a single typical devotee to see how he enters the queue, spends his 30 hours till the time he gets to his darshan, which lasts for about 3 seconds. The first thing they found is, a typical devotee enters the line as the last member in the queue and the queue is a serpentine one which runs for miles. Naturally, when the queue is so long, it is not possible to provide any kind of shelter, which means the devotees are exposed to the weather. The hot sun or rain doesn't matter, they have to stand in the queue. Now, when they are in the line, there is no facility for any food or water. Now, imagine a family that has a child and they don't even have the option to get milk for the child. And there are even bigger issues. Since the line is so long, it is not possible for devotees to have a ready access to toilets and you can imagine the kind of consequences for that. And for the entire 30 hours, there is no form of entertainment which can add to the frustration. And the worst part is, there is no way for anyone to know how much further time is required for them to wait till they get their darshan. This agonizing wait led to all kinds of issues and crowd management was a big challenge for even the police officials. So after observing for many days and strategizing the various ideas, they came up with a very beautiful system called as block-based queue management system. What they did was, instead of having a serpentine queue, they made blocks of 400 devotees each. And devotees would move from one block to the other till they get their darshan. Now, this arrangement instantly changed everything. Since the devotees are now inside a block, it is possible for the temple management to build shelters, which means they are no more exposed to the weather. Now, since everybody is contained in a small space, it is possible to arrange for food and water. And they even ensured that milk packets are available for children. And more importantly, they had dedicated toilet facilities in each of the blocks and they installed large television sets so the crowd constantly remains entertained. And the best part is, this system allowed them to predict the time it takes for people to get their darshan and therefore they made announcement about the time it would take for them to get to the darshan and this periodic announcement gave the hope to the devotees that they would get their darshan soon and therefore crowd management was way simpler. Now, the overall result of this process mapping exercise is, earlier it used to take around 20 to 30 hours to get their darshan. Now, they are able to achieve it in less than 2 to 3 hours. 
Now that is a significant improvement in queue management system. Now you can say, Ram, it's all fine for the temple. Process mapping might have worked for them. But how can I use process mapping to improve the speed with which I create my presentations, reduce my frustrations? Wait, that is exactly where I am coming to. I think the best way to showcase this is to give you a personal example of how we used process mapping in our business to create PowerPoint presentations faster for our clients. Some of you may know, a few years ago, our team used to create PowerPoint presentations for large organizations. We used to create training-related content. Initially, our presentation creation process used to look like this. First, we would sit with the relevant people in the organization for a briefing about what they would want us to develop presentation on. And once we got the briefing, we would tell our team and they would work on creating a PowerPoint presentation complete with design and animations. And we would send the completed PowerPoint presentation to the management. Now, this is what we thought we signed up for. But only later we realized that it is not as simple as it looks. The thing is, the management had their own views about what needs to be included in the presentation. So they used to provide their comments on the PowerPoint presentation and send it back to us so we can rework on the deck. So we then used to spend another set of hours to rework the content, design, animation, and then send the PowerPoint deck to the management. Now the thing is, this team sent the deck to their legal team for their comments. So they gave their comments and sent the deck back to us now we had to spend even more hours reworking the content, design, animation, etc. And then when we sent the deck to the team, the intern would forward that deck to their compliance team. Now they would give their comments and therefore it would take even more hours and then it was sent to their senior management, more rework and to another team, more rework and this went on and on. And to complete a single deck, we used to take many days and that totally frustrated our team and we were pretty much getting killed by rework. So we had to find a way to overcome this death by rework and that is when we resorted to process mapping. And the first step was to get early stakeholder buy-in. When we mapped our slide creation process, we discovered that a lot of the initial changes suggested by the team was about the content itself like say the correctness of data, industry facts, etc. Moreover, since the content was presented in the form of slides, the team found it hard to understand the overall presentation structure, the story flow, etc. So we decided instead of sending a completed slide deck to the team, we would send a simple one page presentation outline to the team. Now this was a game changer because the doc was quite easy for them to correct. So all the facts were corrected in one go. And since the information was not in slides, but as a document, they were able to see the overall structure and flow quite easily. And the best part was, they themselves took the initiative to circulate this one pager to all the other relevant stakeholders who had some say on the presentation. So we had one document which had all the corrections included. So we now could instruct our team to sit and design the slide deck. And this was sent to the team and they were quite happy. And there was no agony of further reworks and this saved us a lot of time and also for the organization. And this led to the second step which was to identify repetitive bottlenecks. Our team set out to dedicate a couple of days to go through every single feedback we received on the various presentations we have created so far. And this simple exercise had given us some very useful insights. Like for example, where approvals stall regularly and who always asks for changes and what kind of info is always missing etc. And we made sure that we fixed all these problems right up front and our one pager became far sharper. Since we were able to fix the source of friction right up front instead of fighting fires every time, we were able to go to the next step which was to clarify roles and handoffs. That is, we turned our attention from the external processes to our internal processes. We developed some critical clarity on who is responsible for content, who is responsible for design, who is the maker, checker, etc. And therefore, we were able to allocate the tasks accordingly. And this gave a lot of role clarity for the individual members of the team. And since the roles were clear, there were no more duplicate efforts, overwriting each other's work and all those, oh, I thought you would do that kind of situation inside the team. 
and this allowed us to move to the next step which was to standardize reusable assets. Process mapping allowed us to clearly see where we were reinventing the wheels. We saw that different teams were creating the same type of slides like say about us, timeline, flow diagram etc from scratch and they were building complex animations from scratch and we saw that it is possible for us to save a lot of time by standardizing these assets so teams can dip into the standard set of templates that we built complete with animation so they can drastically reduce the time it takes for them to create the presentation. We later packaged all those animated PowerPoint templates into a single bundle and called it our comprehensive all-in-one bundle. We even developed a complete training course that helped any new member to convert any vague idea into clear visual slides. We refined the training course and included it as part of our comprehensive all-in-one bundle. And this idea of using templates to create presentations for our clients dramatically reduced our turnaround time and it improved the quality of the presentations we delivered. And by the way, we kept improving our comprehensive all-in-one bundle every time. The 2.0 version is available for you to purchase. The link is in the description box below the video. If you are a professional who needs to create presentations as part of your profession, then this resource can be a game changer for you. And coming back to our saga, the last step in the process mapping was to manage version controls. We found that process mapping helped us improve even small things like the naming conventions we had for files, folders, and the way we stored our files and even things like managing version controls. Earlier, our presentation files used to have names like final underscore final underscore v7 underscore real final etc. And this made it impossible for anyone to see which is the latest version of that PowerPoint file from among the 14 versions before that. Process mapping helped us identify such issues and fix them. You see, I can go on and on about the benefits of process mapping. But you will not realize the true value of this beautiful idea unless you try it yourself. You don't need to run a business to take advantage of the power of process mapping. Start observing how you are creating your presentations today. Write down every single step. Then take a break. Come back and with fresh eyes look at every step and see which are the steps that are redundant which you can throw out and which are the steps that need improvement. And when you implement small changes, you can see for yourself that the way in which you create your PowerPoint presentations dramatically improves. You'll start to see things like, are you storing all your research data in one accessible place or are you duplicating the work? And are you saving time by reusing some of your slides, animations, graphics, etc. or are you creating them from scratch every single time? And even things like, are you getting the same kind of feedback every time you create a presentation and what are those kind of feedbacks which you can fix proactively? And even in the process of delivering your presentation, are you using certain gestures repeatedly or are you using certain words repeatedly? You can fix them proactively when you take the effort to focus on every single step carefully. Just put pen to paper, write down every single step and see the magic unfold. Before you go, don't forget to check out our comprehensive all-in-one bundle and see how this product can change the way you create your presentations. If you liked this presentation, then you will really like this other presentation that I created recently called What is the best way to explain PowerPoint slides with clarity? I will leave a link to that video right now on your screen. Click on the link and watch that video next. You can thank me later. I'll see you inside that video next.